Hello everyone and welcome to the video and welcome to the channel Tokoja Running and Fitness. In today's video I want to take you through nutrition, um, I want to take you through drop bags, I want to take you through checkpoints and aid stations throughout the course of an ultra marathon trail running event. So it's November now as I shoot this video, but back in July I ran a 60 kilometer um, trail uh, ultra marathon um, as part of the Brisbane Trail Ultra. Uh, 60 kilometers, which I think is about 37 miles, with approximately 3,000 meters of climbing or, or just or nearly 10,000 feet. So it was a 60 kilometer course and at every 20 kilometer mark there was a checkpoint or an aid station that I could utilize um, throughout, throughout the event and essentially there were drop bags that you could leave uh, the day before the race um, and they would take those out on course for you. So during the run I was supported, I, I did have a crew but being quite new to ultra trail running or ultra marathon running, um, I wanted to make sure that I had drop bags at both of the locations um, just in case something went wrong. Just so I had some food, just so I had some water, um, just so I was able to access those things without having to carry everything on my vest. Um, there was quite a lot of mandatory gear that you had to carry with you um, as part of your entry for the race. Um, it was really safe, really well run, organised event, the Brisbane Trail Ultra. Um, check it out online. Um, many different distances and the one I did was the 60 kilometre event this year. Um, signed up next year for the 110 kilometre event. So um, stay tuned for some videos on my preparation for that. So I was wearing um, a running vest, uh, as you can see here. Um, this is the Salomon Advanced Skin 12 vest and there was um, a, a stack of mandatory gear and I'll take, I will take you through that but in another video. If you're really interested in seeing what the mandatory gear checklist was and how I um, carried that with me, please leave a comment below um, and I'll be happy to make a video on that because it's really actually quite interesting and surprising that you have to lug all that stuff around for almost you know, nearly 11 hours. So um, within this Salomon vest, um, there's room for at least uh, two and a half litres of water that I was carrying with me or water mixed with electrolytes. Um, the first one was a one and a half litre um, bladder or reservoir um, that went in the back pocket of the vest and had a tube that uh, hooks around your body and you know easy access while you're running. So that was one and a half litres. Um, within this reservoir, uh, I, I carried the full allotment of water, a, a litre and a half, but I also had uh, six to eight um, electrolyte tablets in there as well. Um, and they were obviously high in sodium, high in potassium. Um, Hydrolyte Sports uh, was the brand that I used for this particular race, worked really, really well. Um, I used to use a lot of Gatorade and Powerade on my training runs and my long runs, but after the race or after the run, I just felt awful. Um, I'm still not sure what it was. I got a feeling it had to do with um, potentially lower sodium levels and higher levels of sugar, um, which meant I wasn't really being rehydrated with sodium as much as I should be. But ever since I've switched to Hydrolyte Sports, um, I haven't had that problem. And it's always worked really, really well for me. So in the summer months, I'll probably have anywhere between six to eight tablets for approximately a liter and a half of water. And that'll last me anywhere between one to two hours. So in this particular race, given the, um, the, the amount of climb, the, the 3,000 meters of climb or nearly 10,000 feet, um, it wasn't fast. Well, I wasn't fast. Um, so it actually took me almost three hours to get to each 20 kilometer checkpoint. So checkpoint one at 20 kilometers, checkpoint two at 40 kilometers, and then the finish line at 60 kilometers. So as well as this liter and a half um, of electrolyte mixed with water, uh, I also carried two 500 ml flasks. So there was two of these um, in the front pocket. So there's a pocket um, on the right hand side and a pocket on the left hand side as well. Um, 
for me personally, I prefer only to use the um, back reservoir or back bladder. Um, I just find it more comfortable. I, I don't really find it comfortable when you've got two full 500 meter flasks and you're running along. Um, it just feels quite bulky and very bouncy. Otherwise, the vest fits quite nicely and it's really snug around your body. Um, but, you know, when you're out there for potentially three hours between aid stations, um, I certainly needed that two and a half litres worth of fluids to carry with me. Um, side note, a uh, bit of a funny story. About a week or two before the race, um, I found out that my reservoir was actually leaking. So I actually completed the race um, with a leaking reservoir. Fortunately, it was just a very slow one, but um, a bit risky nonetheless. Um, so in the two front flasks, uh, I have one which is... Uh, again, mixed with uh, the hydrolyte tabs. Um, so two, another two tablets in 500 mils of water on one side. And on the other side, um, it, quite interesting, I do a half Red Bull and half water mix. So 250 mils of Red Bull and 250 mils of water. Um, I didn't do that at the start of the race. I probably uh, implemented it after the first checkpoint. Now, first of all, obviously the sugars are great, um, the taste is great, there's carbohydrates in there, and there's also caffeine and sodium, which helps on a long run as well. Um, it's a little bit of a trick I learned um, as part of one of the training runs. So the Brisbane Trail Ultra is a fantastic event, and in, as part of the lead up to the event, what they actually do is they host some training runs. So you actually need to qualify for the events. It's not something you can just sign up for and turn up on the day and run. Depending on the particular length of race that you're running, um, you actually have to meet certain qualification criteria, which obviously helps with the safety, but to make sure that you're ready for the race and to make sure that you enjoy the day um, and there's no extra additional risks of injury or illness. So as part of my training runs, um, I tried the Red Bull mix with water, sort of 50-50 solution, and it was amazing. So one thing I'll talk about um, you know, in this video and potentially in um, additional ones is Throughout the course of the race, I really like to have treats or something to look forward to. So, you know, in five kilometers, I'll have another sip of Red Bull. Or in 10 kilometers, um, when I get to my, you know, checkpoint, I'll have a muesli bar with, you know, a, a little bit of yogurt on top, which I'll show you in a moment. But the Red Bull works a treat. So you don't sip on it constantly. You don't have a lot of it. But that 250 mils might last you the whole um 20 kilometers in between checkpoints and then you do the same thing again at the next checkpoint in order to get to the finish line. So I really like that strategy because it just gives you something to look forward to when you're out there for so long um, because you can actually be out there for quite a long time. Okay, so in terms of the drop bag itself, um, I just used a supermarket freezer bag. So had one of these for the first checkpoint and another one for the second checkpoint. Um, just a freezer bag that you would normally get from a supermarket, um, which basically fits everything that I need. Uh, you just uh, put your name, your number, and uh, the checkpoint number on top of the bag, and you leave it there the day before. Um, so there is a drop-off location um, that you go to at sort of the start-finish line area. Um, you leave it there by 8 p.m. on the night before the race, and in the morning, I assume that they they take them out on the course and leave them at the various checkpoints for you. Um, when you're running into the checkpoint, uh, not only do you have a GPS tracker attached to your vest so they can um, keep track of you for you know, um, safety purposes, but they can also track your progress so they know when you're coming into a checkpoint and they can get your bag ready for you so that uh, you know, limited time waiting around for those sorts of things as well. So uh, one of those bags at um, the first checkpoint and another at the second. Um, but like I said, it's interesting because you do have to leave it there the day before. So that can definitely determine the types of food um, or, or the things that you leave in your drop bag. So for example, there's certain food that you would want to keep refrigerated or there's certain food that might go off overnight um, or you know it might get squashed. So you, you have to be a little bit careful um, in terms of what you can include in your drop bag depending on you know the time and the location um, that, that you're going to, to leave it um, before the race. So, 
Um, in terms of what I had in each of my drop bags, um, like I said, this is just the drop bag itself. This does not include any mandatory gear that I was carrying. Um, like I said, if you want to go through the mandatory gear that I was carrying, please leave a comment below. Um, it's really, really interesting, really surprising that you carry so much while you're running. So just remember, this is exactly what's in the drop bag itself. It's not what I was carrying throughout the course of the race. Um, it doesn't include mandatory gear or anything in addition that I wanted to carry on me at all times. If you do want to see that in a video, please leave a comment below. Um, it's really, really interesting, um, not only from a safety perspective in terms of what you're asked to carry with you in case you know of illness or injury or getting lost or a snake bite, um, it's really, really interesting in how you fit all that stuff um, on your, in your vest and on your body so that you can, you know, essentially run for over 10 hours. Um, so, in terms of what actually was in my drop bag, the first thing I had was two one and a half litre water bottles. This is exactly one of them. Um, the reason I had two of these was because... Uh, essentially I needed a total of three litres because as I said before I was carrying a one and a half litre um, reservoir on the back and another two of two times 500 mils in the front so a total of two and a half litres so I needed more than two and a half litres of water essentially so um, this two and a half litres lasted me the 20 kilometres it lasted me the almost three hours to get from the start to the first checkpoint um, so then at the checkpoint, what I did is I quickly took my vest off. Um, I say quickly, I, I wasn't that quick. I, I enjoyed myself a little bit at the checkpoints because it was nice to have a little bit of a break. Um, but I took my vest off and I refilled again with eight Hydrolyte Sports tablets, another liter and a half of water. Um, and then again, I did two Hydrolyte Sports tablets in this one with 500 mils of water. And in my other flask was the half Red Bull, 250 mils of Red Bull and 250 mils of water as well. So the water I, I sort of laid down on its side at the bottom of the bag. Um, here is the Red Bull, obviously that was in the bag as well. Um, I actually had two Red Bulls in each bag, just in case, wasn't sure. I wanted to have too much, better to have too much than not enough in these situations. Uh, but I only ever used the one at each checkpoint. Um, I also had my Hydrolyte Sports tablets. Obviously, I didn't want to be carrying them all. I didn't need to be carrying them all. Um, I had the eight in my bladder and the other two in my front flask. So all I needed was some in my drop bag at the first checkpoint and some in my drop bag at the second checkpoint. Um, Maybe it goes without saying, but of course, my trusty energy gels, uh, again, take your pick. Um, these are the particular ones that I used, um, Endura, for this particular race. Um, essentially, they only have a very small amount of caffeine because I had the Red Bull. Um, and here is a couple that I've, you know, historically used a lot as well. Um, take your pick. Uh, I don't really have any problems with them. Yes, after you've had 8, 9, 10, 11, um, they start to get really um, monotonous, boring. Um, oh, gross, I've got to take another gel. Um, but generally, I don't get too upset by them, and I can generally take them every, you know, probably 30 to 45 minutes, depending on my speed, my intensity. Um, but in an in a event like this, it was about every 40 to 45 minutes because... Uh, every hour, every couple of hours, I was also eating solid foods as well. Um, if you'd like to see me do a review um, on some of the energy gels I've used or others, um, again, please leave a comment below. Um, if you're keen to see that sort of thing, please let me know, and I will be able to certainly show you from my perspective what it looks like to use energy gels and all of the different kinds. So what else have we got here? Um, I had an apple. Um, I found that really, really good. Look, I don't want to eat all sugary bad food, um, sugary fruits, but, you know, good sugar. Um, you know, it was juicy, it was refreshing, um, you know, it went down really, really well. Um, probably the one thing I am missing, which I don't have an example for, but I'll put an image up on the screen, is a can of Pringles. Um, this was a, a, a staple at my checkpoints. Uh, I probably ate close to half a can of Pringles at the first checkpoint and another half a can at the second checkpoint. What I really liked about the Pringles was how easily they went down. 
um, the amount of calories that you were consuming um, was quite large, the carbohydrate content as well as the salt and the sodium. Um, it was just really good food to get down. I also put some muesli bars in there. These are Uncle Toby's muesli bars for anyone that's familiar. Um, I really like the rolled oats ones with a little bit of yogurt on top. Um, again, sweet treat. Okay, so I had two, but I only ate one. Um, if, if, I, if I look back at everything I ate at the checkpoint itself, um, the water and the Red Bull were just more about refilling. So they were refilling my flasks and my reservoirs for the next 20 kilometers. Um, the apple was something I ate. I ate a full apple. I ate one muesli bar. Um, I ate half a can of Pringles. And I didn't um, have any energy gels because I was having those sort of the 40, 40 minutes prior to entering the checkpoint, eating at the checkpoint, and then taking another energy gel, say 40 minutes after leaving the checkpoint. So I didn't, I didn't consume any of those. Um, what I did find though was I was probably eating a little too much all in one go if when I attempt my next ultra marathon with that sort of fueling nutrition checkpoint um, structure I will be more inclined to carry some of this food on me in smaller portions and eat more gradually throughout the day because what happened was when I had my half a can of Pringles my apple my muesli bar um, you know, all at once within, you know, a very small five to 10 minute window. Um, that was a lot for my body to digest as I left the checkpoint. So I felt really sluggish to the point where I had to slow down quite a bit and take do a little bit of walking, um, which was not ideal because you've got all this energy or you've consumed all this food um, and you just want to get out, get back out there and, and use it to your advantage. So what I would probably do next time um, is cut up the apple potentially um, even quickly at the checkpoint or have your support crew do that for you and use a Ziploc bag. Um, Ziploc bags were uh, a, a thousand and one uses on a, on a ultra marathon or a, or a trail run um, from keeping your mobile phone dry, keeping your keys dry, um, you know, holding band-aids or, or strapping tape such as this. Um, so I'd probably put maybe a quarter um, of a can of Pringles in a Ziploc bag and carry that with me and eat it slowly as I'm running along as opposed to stopping at a checkpoint and consuming that food and then going again. So that's definitely something I learnt and something I will definitely do differently in future because it was just too much to eat quite quickly all at once and then expect to start running again. So the other things I had in my drop bag in addition to all this food um, were a fresh pair of socks in case I needed them. Thankfully I didn't, um, but you never know what the weather's going to be like. You never know um, what it's going to be like, but it was kind on that particular day. Um, some anti-chafing cream, very important. I had again one of these in both drop bags, but fortunately again I got quite lucky and didn't need it. Um, and then last but not least was just some band-aids. So big ones, smaller ones, square ones, round ones. Mostly this was for blisters, but again, um, a little bit of blistering. Uh, but I was really familiar with the shoes I was wearing. I'd done a lot of training. I practiced running up hills. Um, you know, so I did get some blisters forming, but nothing so much that I needed to stop and treat the blisters, um, uh, you know, uh, during the race. So, and um, this is sort of an example of what I was, uh, I was using, it, well, what I was planning on using if I needed to. So essentially, that is everything in terms of what I included in my drop bags. That, how, that is how I treated the checkpoints. Um, that was what I had for my nutrition at the checkpoints. Like I said, if you want more information about what happened during the race, please leave a comment below and I'll be very pleased to share some more information. Um, I talked a little bit about what I'd do differently in the future with my food and that space it out a little bit more in future instead of 
having it all at once at a checkpoint. But um, like I said, um, you know, I've signed up for the Brisbane Trail Ultra 110 kilometer race um, in July 2022. So looking forward to sharing with you some preparation for that race. Um, it'll be the longest run that I've ever done. Really looking forward to it. I enjoyed the Brisbane Trail Ultra 60 immensely. It was a tremendous achievement. My longest run to date and looking forward to doing more of that in 2022 as well. So stay tuned to the channel. I look forward to uploading regularly. I really hope I can help you, um, especially those of you at the beginner to intermediate level. Let's share um, our learnings. Let's share our experiences. Please like, please subscribe to the channel um, and leave a comment below. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you got something from it. Until next time, see you then.